Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So in this session, we will be looking at teaching learning based optimization. Teaching learning based optimization is a newly proposed technique. It was proposed in uh, 2011, right? Among the five techniques which we are going to see as part of this course, TLBO was the latest proposed technique. We have taken TLBO as our first meta heuristic technique to learn uh, because we found that TLBO is much easier to understand as well as it does not have complexity with respect to tuning of the algorithmic parameters. Unlike other algorithms, there are only two tuning parameters over here. So the outline of this session is that first we will discuss uh, the generic framework of meta heuristic algorithms. We will follow, we'll follow it up with uh, the description of sanitized teaching learning based optimization. We will demonstrate uh, the application of STLBO on a four variable problem. Right? Then we will look into uh, some of the common issues associated with TLBO in literature and we will also look at some of the variants of TLBO. Before getting into TLBO, let us familiarize ourselves with the terminologies uh, that we will be using in meta heuristic techniques and how they relate to the terminologies we have been using so far in optimization. So for example, in optimization we were using decision variables. So decision variables are also known as uh, marks or subjects or position or gene uh, depending upon the meta heuristic technique that uh, we are working with. A solution is called as a population member, uh, a learner chromosome. Uh, child or parent, whereas a set of solutions are known as population, class, moths, flames, water body or swam. The objective function value which we use in the optimization literature is also known as nectar amount or energy or fitness depending upon the meta heuristic technique which we are working with. Fitness in particular usually means objective function value except for few algorithms. So in ABC fitness does not necessarily exactly correspond to the objective function value. We will come to it later but most of the algorithms use the terminology fitness to indicate the objective function value. So iterations are also known as generations or cycles in meta heuristic techniques. This slide shows the communication between meta heuristic techniques and the optimization problem. Most meta heuristic techniques generate randomly a single solution or a set of solutions, right? So, uh, when we say solutions, it is nothing but the value of the decision variables. So, if we have a problem with 5 decision variables, then we have a vector of 5 values within the bounds of the problem. Once we generate the solution, right? So, those decision variables are sent to the optimization problem and over here the fitness function is evaluated. That is the only communication between the meta heuristic techniques and optimization problem. For every solution, right, we will get a fitness function value. So the fitness function value is returned back to the algorithm. So the algorithm sends the decision variables and the problem sends back the fitness function. Based on this information, the fitness and the current set of decision variables which were sent to the optimization problem, uh, the algorithm uses intelligent operators to come up with new set of decision variables which is again sent to the problem and the fitness function value is received from the problem. This communication uh, goes on repeatedly till we complete a specified termination criteria. So if we take an example, right, so let us assume that we have a three variable problem x1, x2, x3, right, and they are arranged in this order, right, that the first variable is x1, second variable is x2, third variable is x3, right. So here phi 2, 3 indicates that a value of phi has been assigned to decision variable 1, a value of 2 has been assigned to decision variable 2 and a value of 3 has been assigned to decision variable 3, right. So now that is sent to the optimization problem. Let us assume that our optimization problem is to minimize this function f is equal to x1 square minus 8 x1 x2 plus x3, right. So here if we see uh, to calculate the fitness all that we, we are required to do is phi square minus 8 into phi into 2 plus 3. So if we calculate this value, it should come out to be minus 52, right? And that value is sent back to the 
metaheuristic technique. So, this is the only communication that is going to happen between the metaheuristic technique and the optimization problem. Broadly, if we see, right, so the optimization problem could be anything, it can be even an experiment over here instead of this uh, fitness function, it can be even an experiment, right, and the result of the experiment, a quantitative measure, is to be sent back to the metaheuristic technique. So, let us see the generalized scheme for metaheuristic techniques, right. So, for to employ any metaheuristic techniques, we need uh, the fitness function and bounds of the decision variable. So, that comes with the problem definition itself. So, if we have an optimization problem, we will have a way to estimate the quality of a solution. In most cases, it is in terms of the objective function, a mathematical expression and the number of decision variables and their respective bounds, right. So, the first step is to uh, define the parameters. So, meta heuristic techniques come with their own set of parameters which have to be uh, provided by the user. So, for most of the technique, the two commonly required parameters are population size and maximum number of iteration. Maximum number of iteration will tell us when to stop the procedure, whereas population size is the number of solution which the technique is uh, going to work with. So, the first step is to generate a random population within the domain of decision variables followed by evaluation of the fitness function of this population. So, this is the place wherein we need the fitness function. Once that is done, uh, we initialize a counter t is equal to 1 to keep a count as to how many times we are repeating the cycle. So, these are iterative techniques. So, we have a counter to keep track of the number of iterations that we have completed so far. So, we initialize t is equal to 1 and then check for this condition whether t is less than or equal to capital T, right. So, in the first place let us say if my number of iterations is 10, so initially t is equal to 1, so it will enter this loop. This is where the technique actually starts. Now that we have a population, few members of the populations are selected. Those selected members are known as p prime, right, p prime of t. So, you already, we already have a population, we select few members from the population, we perform some operations to them so as to vary them, right. So, the solutions which we have, which we have selected from the initial population, we vary them so as to get a new set of solutions. So, once we have the new solutions, we will evaluate the fitness function of the new solutions. So, now we have, let us say we started with a population size of 5, right. So, let us say we generated, uh, we selected few solutions from the 5 solutions and then we uh, employed the variation operator. Let us say we came up with 3 new solutions, right. So, now we have 8 solutions and their fitness function value. We will employ a survivor strategy so that out of this 8 solutions, 5 solutions are selected, right. That would complete one iteration, right. So, we increase the iteration counter and then go and check for this condition, whether this condition is satisfied or not. So, as long as this condition uh, is met, this cycle is repeated and once this condition is met, we terminate the procedure and that is the end of the algorithm. Since we have a population at any given point of, uh, at any given iteration, the best solution in the last iteration is considered to be the optimal solution determined by that particular meta heuristic technique. So, let us see how uh, the performance of a typical meta heuristic technique will be. So, this is a uh, benchmark function known as Rastringent function, right. It is a two variable function. It is a scalable function as in like by varying this value of d, you can have it as a two variable problem, three variable problem and so on and so forth. So, if we fix the value to be 2, we get this search space, right. So, x1 and x2, it varies between minus 5.12 to 5.12. So, both this decision variable have the same bounds between minus 5.12 to 5.12. This shows the contour plots. So, we have discussed in the last class what are contour plots and this shows the figure below shows the uh, surface plot of it, right. So, this is x1, this is x2 and this is f, right. f is the objective function value. So, for a particular value of x1 and x2, what is the objective function value can be determined using this expression once we know x1 and x2 and that is how this plot has been made. Right. So, now if we look at this plot, there are a large number of peaks. Uh, here if you see, there are large number of peaks and there are large number of valleys. So, the job of our meta heuristic technique is to locate the minima in this complex function, right. Uh, it does not know where the minima is. Initially, we are starting with a random population. So, if it is an intelligent technique, it should be able to figure out by itself as to where the minimum solution is located and should move towards it, right. So, the, as we said, uh, as we have seen in the previous slide that these are iterative techniques. So, let us see how this will pan out. So, initially 
we said we will generate few solutions, right? let us say we have 10 solutions. So, initially those 10 solutions in the search space will look like uh, this as shown in iteration 1 and then we perform those uh, selection, variation and survival strategy to come up with iteration 2. So, the solution in uh, iteration 1 and the solution in iteration 2 if we see they have moved from their original place and the same thing we can see in 3. right? So, this particular solution if you see it has come closer to 0, 0. Right? So, if we keep doing this for 20 iterations this is what happens. So, this is a typical performance of meta heuristic technique. right? Initially the population are scattered as the iteration progresses they are moving towards a one particular point. right? In this case it happens that this point is nothing but the global optima. right? It manages to reach the global optima. Uh, for this problem the optima is 0, 0. So, if you substitute 0 in this objective function you will see that you will get a value of 0 for uh, f. Right? So, this is how the performance of a typical meta heuristic technique is going to look like that initially the solutions are to be generated and scattered randomly. We employ those three major steps selection, variation, survivor. We do it repeatedly for multiple times and the expectation is that randomly scattered solutions will converge to a particular point. It is important to remember that it is not necessary for all the points to converge. right? As long as one of the uh, solutions in the population is converging towards the optima, it is a good technique because the rest of the solution members can still explore the search space. Right? So, coming to teaching learning based optimization, teaching learning based optimization uh, was proposed in 2011. Right? Uh, it is commonly not found in uh, regular textbooks. Right? So, if you want additional learning you can look into this paper or one of these two papers. So, all these three papers had proposed teaching learning based optimization. So, this slot shows the popularity of TLBO. It was proposed in 2011 and ever since the number of publications citing uh, teaching learning based optimization has been uh, increasing exponentially. This plot shows the use of TLBO across various uh, fields. So, for example, it has been used in engineering, uh, so social sciences, business, decision sciences, mathematics, computer science, energy, uh, material sciences and many other uh, fields. So, TLBO even though it is a recently proposed algorithm seems to be uh, gaining increased attention. So, as we discussed in the beginning we have chosen TLBO because it seems to be working on uh, many of the problems and it is one of the simplest techniques out there. So, we thought that we will start with the simplest technique and then build on that. Right? So, TLBO is a stochastic population based technique proposed by Rao et al. So, the inspiration for this algorithm is uh, knowledge transfer in a classroom uh, environment. The required parameters for this meta heuristic technique is population size and number of iterations. So, if we want to use TLBO we need to fix a population size uh, which is an integer. Right. So, basically what we mean is that we will be working with uh, uh, that number of solutions at any given point of uh, time. So, that is population size and then we have the number of iteration which basically tells uh, when to stop uh, the algorithm. So, if we look at a classroom environment the teaching usually happens in two phases. One is the teacher phase and the learner phase. In the teacher phase the students learn from the teacher whereas in the learner phase the students interacting among themselves and trying to increase their knowledge. Right? So, TLBO mimics these two phases teacher phase and learner phase. In teacher phase we will be generating a new solution right? using the best solution available so far and the mean of the class or mean of the population. So, in TLBO the population is also known as uh, class right? and then we will employ a greedy selection strategy. right? So, in greedy selection strategy we will see if the new solution which we have generated is better. So, if this new solution is better we will bring that solution inside the population uh, and eliminate the solution which was used to generate this new solution. So, that is why we have the terminology greedy, greedy selection strategy. In learner first also uh, we use a different variation operator to generate a new solution. right? Over here we do not rely on the best solution whereas we rely on a, what is called as a partner solution. A partner solution is uh, a randomly selected member from the class and we will employ a greedy selection strategy. So, again the same thing that if the new solution which we generate is better than the solution which is used to generate it uh, then we will take the new solution. If the new solution is not better then we will retain the current solution. Right? The new solution is discarded in, in that case. So, this is a important uh, step in teaching learning based optimization. Right? So, what we are going to do is we have a set of solution. The first solution will undergo teacher phase. The first solution will undergo learner phase. 
only then second student will undergo the teacher phase right so the first student completes the teacher phase as well as the learner phase and subsequently the second student or the second member of the class undergoes teacher and learner phase right so this is the second student this is the third student right so if we have five students we will have t4 l4 t5 l5 that would complete one iteration right and we are expected to do t such iterations right so again in iteration 2 the first solution will undergo teacher phase the first solution will undergo learner phase once that is complete the second solution will undergo teacher phase and the second solution will undergo learner phase so this cycle is repeated till we complete the specified number of iterations so we will now see the working of sanitized tlbo on a spear function uh, the objective function in spear function is given by the summation of uh, square of the decision variable so here we will take four decision variable right so domain of the decision variable is 0 to 10 our objective function is x1 square plus x2 square plus x3 square plus x4 so our objective is to minimize right so the, this function is actually a scalable function so instead of four variable uh, problem this can also be converted into a five variable problem because the objective function is actually given by I, sigma i equal to 1 to d x i square so depending upon the value of d uh, this can be a four variable problem five variable problem we can scale this problem as we want the first step in uh, sanitized tlbo is to fix the population size so we are taking a population size of np is equal to 5 we need to fix the number of iterations uh, because that is what is going to tell us as to uh, when to complete the uh, algorithm so t is equal to 10 the next step is to generate uh, random initial population so the domain of the variable is given 0 to 10 we are supposed to generate five random solutions so this is solution 1 solution 2 solution 3 solution 4 and solution 5 since my population size is 5 uh, right so in this case we have generated all random numbers so at least for the first uh, first iteration it's easier to calculate the objective function so the objective function of s1 is 80 the objective function of s2 is 40 objective function of s3 is 35 4 is uh, 1 or 2, 5 is 113. So the way to calculate this objective function is f is equal to, in the, for the first solution it is 4 square plus 0 square plus 0 square plus 8 square. So this will turn out to be 80, right. So similarly we calculate the object, uh, objective function value for all the solutions and this is also known as the fitness function value. So the next phase is the teacher phase. In teacher phase we generate a new solution with the help of teacher and mean of the population. So the teacher is the solution which corresponds to the best fitness function value. So now we have the population and we also have the fitness function values of the population. So from the fitness function value we can identify what is which is the least value right because we are solving a minimization problem. Once we identify the least value in the fitness function the solution corresponding to it is the uh, solution uh, which has the best fitness function value. So that solution will act as teacher. Uh, once we have selected the teacher. Uh, we need to generate a new solution with the help of uh, this equation. So every member of the population is uh, to undergo the teacher phase. So whichever uh, member is undergoing teacher phase that is that will correspond to this x. R is a random number between 0 and 1. X best is the teacher, right? the best solution in the mm, class or the population. Tf is a teaching factor, Tf is known as teaching factor and it has to be either 1 or 2. Right? X mean is the mean of the population. So you need to remember that tf is constant for all the variables. So if I have a five variable problem, even then, uh, even then I need to have only one scalar, uh, which has to be either one or two for generating one new solution. If we are generating a second solution, we'll uh, select tf again randomly, right? So for one solution, tf uh, only one tf is needed, which is not the case for r, right? So if I have three variable problem, then I need to select three values of random number between zero to 0 to 1 right so r is to be r is to be selected for each variable whereas tf is the same for all variables of a solution remember this is only for generating one solution when i want to generate another uh, solution using teacher phase again i need to generate tf and r right? so now let us apply this teacher phase for our first population member so this is the population member which is undergoing uh, the teacher phase the first population member 4008 the best solution if we see here it is 35 right so the solution corresponding to it is the teacher so now we have selected teacher so in this equation i know this one right now i need to i need to find out the mean right so mean is calculated by taking the average of all the columns so the average of this 
the average of this right. So, in this case it is 4 plus 3 plus 2 plus 6 that comes out to 15, 15 by 5, 3. Similarly, for this column it is the summation of this which should turn out to be 32, 32 by 5, 6.4. So, now we have mean of the class. Remember the fitness value of the mean solution is not required and it is definitely not the mean of this right. So, we only require the mean solution not its fitness. We will not spend a functional evaluation trying to evaluate the fitness uh, function of this mean solution because we do not require it right. So, now we need this random values and we need this teaching factor. Let us take the random, uh, random values to be 0 0.8, 0 0.2, 0 0.7, 0 0.4. I need 4 values because we it is a 4 variable problem whereas I need only 1 teaching factor and the teaching factor has to be either 1 or 2. So, the new solution is given by this equation. So, x nu 1 is equal to this one indicates that we are generating a new solution for the first solution with, with the help of the first solution. So, this is the current, uh, current solution plus the random number which we have selected multiplied by the difference of best solution and mean with the teaching factor right. So, uh, if we calculate this it will come out to point uh, minus 0 0.80, 0 0.04, minus 5.46 and 4.88. So, it is element to element uh, operation. So, for example, the first uh, this point minus 0 0.8 is determined by 4 plus 0 0.8 into 0 minus 2 into 3 right. So, the first variable is 4, the random number for the first variable is 0 0.8, the best solution first variable of the best solution is 0 and 3 is the first variable in the mean, this 2 is the teaching factor. So, this should give us minus 0.8 right. So, now we have generated a new solution. Now that we have generated a new solution, we need to find out the fitness of this function right. Only when we have the fitness of this function, we will be able to uh, say whether this function, this solution is better than the solutions which we already have. So, what we will do is, uh, we will calculate the fitness function of this, but there is a small problem over here. Right. If you remember the domain of the decision variable was between 0 and 10 and this variable and this variable do not fall in this domain. The objective function is uh, to be evaluated only for solutions within the bound. Uh, we can still calculate with this values, we can still calculate the fitness function value, but no matter how good or bad it is, it is useless because I cannot use this solution. This solution violates my bounds, right. So, what we need to do is first bound this solution. Somehow, we need to bring it back into the region. Once it is in the region, we can um, evaluate the fitness function value, right. So, let us see how to bound this solution. So, there can be three cases for bounding of the solution. The first case is uh, given the lower bound and the upper bound, the value of the of a particular variable is within its bounds. So, for example, in this case it is uh, somewhere within its bound. In this case, the variable is already within its bounds, so we do not need to bound. It can happen that the variable exceeds its upper bound. So, for example, if my lower bound is 5 and my upper bound is 10, the variable has a value of let us say 12. Right. So, in this case it is violating the upper bound. So, since it is violating the upper bound, we need to bring it back uh, into the domain. So, what we will do is we will push it to the boundary. So, this 12 is overridden with a value of 10, right. So, because then it comes within, within the bound, right. Similarly, the violation can be in the lower bound. So, for example, if my lower bound is let us say 3, uh, the teacher face can give me a solution in which uh, this particular variable has a value of 1 as its lower bound, right. So, uh, now the solution is violating the lower bound. So, what we will do is we will again push it to its boundary, right. So, this will become 3. So, in this example, uh, so this is just a single variable example what I demonstrated. Uh, so, for example, consider a case wherein the lower bound is, it is a 3 variable problem 2, 3, 4, right. And the upper bound is let us say 5, 8, and uh, let us say 7 right? and let us say I have a solution, uh, I have generated a new solution which is actually uh, 1, let us say 5 and let us say 9 right. So, in this solution if I, if we see this, uh, this 1 actually violates the lower bound because the lower bound for the first variable is 2. So, the corrected value would be the bounded solution would be x will be 2 for the second variable it is 5 the new solution has the variable value of 5, uh, 5 is within the bound between 3 and 8 it lies within the bound. So, I do not need to 
bound it, it is already within the bound. So, 2, 5 for the third variable the lower bound is 4, the upper bound is 7, right? But what I, the value that I have is 9. So, in this case we will push the solution to the upper bound, so 7. If this is our upper and lower bound and if this is the new solution uh, which has been generated using teacher phase, bounding of the solution will give us this. So, this bounding procedure uh, is commonly known as corner bounding uh, because we are pushing the uh, variable which is violating its bound to its particular bound, the lower bound or the upper bound. So, bounding is required uh, almost in all meta heuristic techniques because the operators designed uh, are not necessarily uh, designed to give values within the bounds. Right? There are some operators which can give you values within the bounds, but most operators do not do that. So, in that case a bounding strategy has uh, is to be used to bound the solutions. There are various other bounding strategies that can be used, but most of the algorithms use this uh, corner bounding. Right? So, again to emphasize this one, uh, it is not the entire solution is not bounded. Right? So, for example, if this is 159, uh, it is not the not the entire solution is pushed to one of the bounds. So, uh, it, the equivalent solution for this is not 2, 3, 4 or 5, 8, 7. Right? Only the variable that is violating the bound. So, 1 is violating the bound and this 9 is violating the bound. So, only those variables are to be corrected. Right? So, this is the bounding. So, now we know how to bound the solution. So, the solution which we had was minus 0 0.8, 0 0.04, minus 5.46 and 4.88 and the domain of the decision variable was between 0 and 10. So, now we can see that x1 and x3 violates the lower bound. So, I can use this, oper uh, this operator, this max operator, right. So, what we are going to do is this we have 0, 0, 0, 0 over here that is our lower bound. So, we are going to compare uh, element to element. So, what is the maximum of these two? Maximum of minus 0 0.8 and 0 is maximum is 0 maximum of 0 0.04 and 0 is 0 0.04, maximum of 0 and minus 5.46 is 0 and maximum of 4.8 and 0 is 4.88. So, this is our new solution. This solution is within the bounds. So, here we can see that these two variables did not violate the bounds. So, they are retained in the new solution as such. Right? Now that we have generated the uh, new solution, the next step is to evaluate the fitness of uh, this solution. Right? So, once we will evaluate the fitness of the solution, subsequently we will perform a greedy selection strategy to update the uh, to update the population. So, if the new solution is better, if the fitness function of the new solution is better than the fitness of the solution used to generate it, so this is fi, so the ith solution, then the new solution will be taken inside the population, right, else the new solution will be discarded, right. If this condition does not hold. Uh, then the new solution would be discarded. If this condition holds, the new new solution enters the population in place of the solution which was used to generate this new solution. So, let us now apply this uh, to our population, right. Uh, we need to remember that we are still at solution 1, right. Solution 1 is supposed to uh, complete the teacher phase, right. We have generated a new solution. Now, we can evaluate the fitness function of this new solution 0 0.040, 4.88. So, if we plug that into the uh, objective function, uh, we get a fitness function value of 23.82, right. So, uh, this was the solution which was used to generate the new solution and this is the solution. The fitness of both of the solutions are given over here, right. So, since 23.82 is less than 80, this new solution is actually better, right. And this x1 uh, is, act is to be replaced. Right. So, if I update uh, the population, this solution enters it and this solution is uh, eliminated from the population. So, this completes teacher phase of the first solution, right. Uh, the second step is learner phase of the first solution. Remember, we need to complete the teacher and learner phase of the first solution. Only then we are supposed to do the teacher and learner phase of the second solution, right. So, that uh, that is to be uh, taken care of, right. So, first solution teacher phase is done, right. Now, first solution has to undergo the learner phase, right. So, let us see uh, what is learner phase. So, in learner phase a new solution is generated with the help of a partner solution. So, the partner solution is randomly selected solution from the population. So, we have a population, we will randomly select one member of the population who will act as partner to the uh, solution which is undergoing the learner phase.
in learner phase, uh, there are these two equations which are available to generate a new solution. So the selection of the appropriate equation depends upon the fitness function of the member which is undergoing the learner phase and the fitness function of the partner. Right? So if the fitness function of the member is better than the fitness function of the partner, then this uh, equation is to be used, else this equation has to be used. So the only difference between these two equations is that in one case it is you need to add this vector and another case you need to subtract, uh, subtract this. Right? So again here r is a random number between 0 and 1. Uh, we need to generate as many random numbers as many uh, the number of decision variables for generating one solution right so if i have a five variable problem i need to generate five random uh, five random values between 0 and 1 to generate one new solution right so if we want to generate another new solution when the second solution enters uh, the learner phase we will have to generate again five new random numbers right so let us apply learner phase so we are still at with the solution 1. So solution 1 is supposed to go to the learner phase. Right? Let us randomly select one of this. So let me select that solution 4 will act as the partner for solution 1. Right? So we have solution 1 here, we have solution 4 and we need 4 random numbers. So let these be the random numbers. Now we will have to select which of these equations are to be applied. Right? So the fitness function of the first member is 23.82 and the fitness function of the fourth member which is the partner that is 102. So between these two solutions if we see 23.82 is better. So f here there has to be a i. Right? So this equation is valid. Right? Equation 1 is to be selected. So if we apply equation 1, so equation 1 specifies that the new solution is current solution plus the random number multiplied by the difference between the current solution and the partner solution. So here also it is the same thing. So for example this 4.88 has to be added with this number 0.5 into 4.88 minus 9 because this I am generating for the fourth variable. Uh, you can generate, uh, you can check for the rest of the three variables. So it is, uh, it, uh, these are element to element uh, operations. So this value should ha turn out to be 2.82. That is why this 2.82 is o over here. So now we have generated a new solution. Uh, again, uh, the same problem which we encountered in teacher phase is being encountered over here that these three variables are not within the bounds of the decision variable. The bound of the bounds of the decision variable was between 0 and 10. Right? So again, we will employ a corner bounding strategy to bound it. Right? So this is what it specifies. We need to bound the solution then evaluate the fitness of the new solution and then again perform a greedy search. Uh, this is, this, these tips are exactly similar to what we did in uh, teacher phase. So now let us employ that over here for our example. So x1, x2, x3 violates the lower bound. right? So if I bound them, this will become 0, this will become 0, this will remain 2.82 because it is not violating any of the bounds. So this is our new solution. So the next step is to evaluate the fitness of the new solution. So it is fitness of the new solution will be 7.95. Okay. Uh, now we will have to perform a greedy search, right? So the solution that was undergoing that is undergoing learner phase is solution one. So this is our solution one. This is the new solution generated with the help of solution one, right? So now there is a competition between these two solutions. Only one of them can survive. The one that will survive is the new solution because it has a lower fitness value than the uh, solution which was used to generate, right? Since uh, 7.95 is less than 23.82, this solution will enter the population and this solution will be taken out, right? So to consolidate what happened for the solution 1 was solution went, solution 1 underwent teacher phase, it got a better solution. So this solution became S1 right? and this solution underwent learner phase and it got another better solution. Right? So when we obtained this better solution at the end of teacher phase 1, this was removed. Now this will be removed because we have a better solution. Right? So by applying uh, teacher and learner phase for the first member, we have been able to reach 7.95. The best solution now is uh, this 7.95.
in this case it happened that both teacher face and learner face gave us a, a better solution but we could have encountered uh, failures also so now let us apply uh, teacher face to the second solution right so s2 right so this is s2 so the first step is to identify the teacher so the teacher is 7.95 because it has the least objective function value so this is the teacher solution now the next step is to calculate the mean of the solution so the mean of the population is nothing but the mean of these four columns that turns out to be 2.2 1.4 4.4 and 5.36 so now we have the mean of the population we have the best uh, best solution we know the solution which is undergoing uh, the teacher phase right so now we can apply this equation to generate a new solution since teaching factor is required uh in the teacher phase we'll have to generate a random number either uh, which has to be either 1 or 2 so let us assume that uh, the random number which we generated is 1 and i need four random numbers because i have four decision variables let uh, the four random numbers be this so using this equation we can again uh, generate the uh, new solution right uh, so the new solution will be 1.02 0.58 5.48 and 5.98 right in this case uh, if we see none of the variables are violating their bounds because the bounds are between 0 and 10 all of the variables are within the bounds so we can directly evaluate the fitness function of this solution so since the solution is already bounded we can evaluate its fitness function right so fitness function is again nothing but the objective function value so x1 square plus x2 square plus x3 square plus x4 square so that will work out to be 67.17 we know that it was the second solution which is undergoing the teacher phase right and the new solution uh, it has a fitness value of 1 140 so this is the solution which is undergoing the teacher phase and the new solution which we generated has a fitness of 67.17 right so the new solution which we have generated is better than the old solution so this is better so we'll use this to update the population right so remember when we are updating the population we need to up, uh, update the decision variables as well as the fitness function value now we have completed the teacher phase of the second solution so the next step is to perform the learner phase for the second solution right so now our second solution is uh, this one right so this is the second solution so in learner phase as you know we need to randomly select a partner so let us select the partner to be 5 and uh depending upon the fitness of the current solution which is undergoing uh the learner phase and the fitness of the partner we'll have to select one of this equation no matter which equation we use we'll require this random numbers as many as decision variables so let the four random numbers be 0.09 0.7 0.1 and 0.6 so the solution that is undergoing learner phase is x2 and the partner is x5 6283 and we know the fitness function of both the solutions the second solution has a fitness function value of 67.17 and the fifth solution has a fitness function value of 113 right so since uh, f is less than fp right f is the current solution which is undergoing learner phase fp is the partner which we have selected so 67.17 is less than 113 so we are supposed to use the first equation because of this condition so if we apply this equation so this is the current solution which is undergoing the learner phase plus the random number into the current solution minus the partner right so partner is the fifth solution which is 6283 we'll get a new solution given over here 0.57 minus 0.41 5.23 and 7.77 again if we see these three variables are between the bounds right so remember the bound is x has to be less than uh, x has to be between 0 and 10 right so only this variable Uh, has a value which is not within the bounds so what we do is we employ corner bounding strategy and uh, move this variable to the to its lower bound since it is violating the lower bound we change this value to 0 since this value is violating the lower bound so the next step is to evaluate the fitness of the bounded solution right so this solution is within the bound so we can use it to evaluate the fitness so the fitness turns out to be 88.05 Right. so the solution which underwent learner phase that is the second solution has a fitness of 67.17 and the solution which it generated is 88.05 right so the new solution which we have generated is poor than the current solution right so what we'll do is we'll discard this solution and we'll retain uh, this solution in the population so that's what uh, you see over here right so this value is not updated 
because the new value 88.05 is poorer than 67.17. So, in this case the loaner phase does not yield a better solution. As we discussed previously it is not necessary that the teacher phase or the loaner phase definitely give us a good solution, there is no guarantee for it. So, this slide shows uh, for the third, third member right, so this is the mean of the class, these are the random numbers, teaching factor. Uh, this variable is violating the bounds, so it is brought back in, inside the bounds and then a greedy search is employed. So, 0, 3, 1, 5, this solution uh, has a fitness function of 35, whereas the new solution which we generated has a fitness function of 22.47, right. So, this, this will be eliminated and this will be incorporated into the population, right. Then the solution 3 undergoes the learner phase, that is also similar to what we have discussed. Right. So, this is the initial population, so the solution 3, this is the solution that we are working with. Right. So, in this case we have selected the partner to be 1, so this is the partner. Right. So, uh, we have this solution which is undergoing, we have the partner, we need to compare the fitness function, the third solution has a fitness function of 22.47, the first solution which is the partner solution has a fitness function of 7.95. In this case the partner is having a better fitness function value than the solution that is going. Uh, undergoing learner phase, so we need to select the second equation, right. So, if we apply second equation, we get this new solution which is already within the bound, so we do not need to worry about bounding the solution. So, if we calculate the objective function of this solution, uh, it turns out to be 16.27, right. So, the solution which was used to generate this has a uh, fitness function of 22.47 and we have obtained a solution 16.27. So, this can be eliminated, right, because I have a better solution. This solution enters in place of the solution which is discarded, right. So, this completes the learner phase of the third solution. For fourth solution, we will not show you the uh, entire uh, procedure, it is fairly simple and straightforward. We expect you to uh, try it out your, by yourself and uh, see if the values that we have match with the values that you have obtained. If the fourth solution undergoes teacher phase, uh, so remember even teacher phase, to perform teacher phase we need 4 random values because we have 4 decision variables and we need 1 teaching factor which has to be uh, 1 or 2, right. So, if we take this random numbers and this teaching factor then you will get a new solution, you need to check whether the new solution is within the bounds or not. If the new solution is within the bounds, well and good, you go and determine the fitness function value. If the new solution is out of the bounds, you need to bound it and then evaluate the fitness function. Once you have evaluated the fitness function, you need to compare uh, the fitness function of the new solution which you have generated with the fourth solution. So, whichever is better will be retained in the population and the inferior one would be discarded, right. So, that would be the end of teacher phase for the fourth solution and then uh, perform learner phase with this random number and this partner to see if you are able to get this one. Unlike the teacher phase wherein we had just one equation, here we have two equation in the learner phase. So, only one of the equation has to be selected. So, the equation that we will select depends upon the fitness function of the solution that is undergoing the learner phase and the partner, right. So, in this case, uh, the partner is 2, so it has to be con compared with that fitness function value and the appropriate equation has to be selected. And if you complete the calculation, uh, see what is the solution that you are getting, again check for the bounds, if, whether it is in the bounds or not. If it is not in the bounds, you need to bound the solution and evaluate its fitness function. Subsequently perform a greedy search, uh, if the new solution is better, take it inside the population or else discard it. Right. So, similar to the fourth solution, uh, we expect you to perform uh, the calculation for the fifth solution, right. So, the fifth solution is 6283 and it has a fitness function value of 113. So, remember for performing teacher phase, so if you use this set of random number and this teaching factor, perform the teacher phase for this particular student, the fifth solution, right. Once you perform the, sol once you generate a new solution, you will have to check whether it is in bounds or not. If it is not in the bounds, you will have to bound it and evaluate its fitness function. If the new solution has a fitness function value better than 113, you will update the population, else you will not update the population, right. So, that is what we expect you to do, determine the population and the fitness after the teacher phase. Once you have that, we expect you to perform the learner phase, right. In learner phase again, you will require uh, 4 random numbers, use this random numbers and you will also require a partner. So, take the partner to be the third solution. So, this will be the partner solution. Similarly, if you perform the learner phase, you will get a new solution 
bound it, evaluate its objective function value, check whether it is better or not. If it is better than the solution that is undergoing the learner phase, update the population, right. So, in this case, uh, either in teacher phase or in the learner phase, you will come up with a solution which will have a fitness function value of 36.39, right. So, that is why it is updated uh, in this population. To consolidate, we had 5 solutions, right. So, the first solution underwent teacher phase followed by the first solution undergoing the learner phase. Only when the first solution had completed teacher phase and learner phase did the second solution uh, undergo teacher phase. Similarly, we performed for all the 5 solutions. So, once this is complete, uh, we have completed one iteration, one iteration or one generation or one cycle uh, of TLBO. This has to be repeated multiple times. Remember the generalized structure uh, of uh, meta heuristic techniques that we discussed some time ago. So, this has this procedure has to be repeated multiple times. How many times? T times. T was a user defined parameter which we had fixed uh, at the beginning of uh, uh, solving this example, right. So, here if we see at the end of 10 iteration, uh, this is what uh, the solution would look like. By now, you would have realized that uh, no doubt whatever we were doing was very simple, basic arithmetic operations is what we were performing, but there are way too many computations, right. So, usually these techniques are useful only when we uh, use them uh, implemented on a, on a computer because it is too difficult, too laborious I would say uh, to implement uh, these many iterations for these many population size. So, in this example, we had taken a population size of only 5, right. Uh, uh, if your number of decision variables are large, then we would work with a larger population size and we will have to perform many, many iterations, right. So, it is very difficult to uh, fully realize the potential of meta heuristic techniques uh, if we do not use a computer. So, coming back to this problem, right. So, at the end of 10 iterations, this was this is the population, right. So, in this population, if we see two solutions have reached an identical value, uh, identical objective function value of 0 and their decision variables are also identical, right. So, now since we have performed the uh, required number of iterations, we will consider 0 to be the minimum uh, of this function. In this case, it happens that 0 is indeed the minimum of this function, but uh, TLBO does not guarantee that we will always reach the uh, global optimal solution, right. Uh, the expectation is that it will reach, but it may or may not reach the globally optimal solution. So, let us see uh, what was actually happening uh, uh, during the iteration. Since we performed only one iteration, uh, it is difficult to see how things were panning out, right. So, this is uh, a video which was generated using a MATLAB program. We have taken a two variable problem uh, x1 and x2 uh, with a lower and upper bound of minus 100 to 100. So that is the lower and upper bound for both the variables, it is the same, right these points which you see on the right hand side are the solutions, right. The initially we generated a random solutions, right. So, those are plotted over here. So, as iteration progresses, these solutions would move, right. So, when the, let us say if uh, this is let us say solution 1. So, when solution 1 underwent teacher phase, it would have changed and when it underwent learner phase, it would have further, it might have further changed, right. So, these solutions are going to keep moving in this search space, right. So, uh, this is the search space, these lines are our contour plots. This plot shows the search space and this plot shows the objective function value, right. So, if we, if I run this video, right, so here you will see the solutions are moving, right. So, the solutions are trying to converge to a particular point, right. So, see all the solutions are moving towards one particular point, right, as my iteration progresses. Uh, so, as iteration progresses, all the solutions have converged to a particular solution. Right. So, same thing if you see on this plot, right. So, here we have the objective function value which is continuously decreasing. Initially when we started, uh, we had an objective function value of uh, more than 500 and now it has converged to 0. So, this shows the working of uh, TLBO. Let us consolidate uh, whatever we have seen it in terms of a pseudocode, right. So, pseudocode will is a simple representation of whatever we have discussed so far, right. So, the first thing was uh, we had to uh, provide the input fitness function, the lower and upper bounds. So, this comes from the problem definition. We had to fix the population size and the termination criteria. Then we initialized a random population. Let us call that random population as P. 
after generating the initial random population, we evaluated its fitness, right? Fitness in the sense we evaluated its objective function value. We decided to do something for t times. So, this is that loop for i is equal to 1 to t and for each iteration, right? So, that is the iteration loop and for each iteration, every member of the class was supposed to undergo the teacher phase as well as the learner phase. So, this for loop is going to take care of that fact within the second for and end is going to repeatedly happen for every member. Okay. So, for every member uh, we determined the best solution from the population. So, that was the teacher, we determined the mean of the population and then we found a new solution using this equation. The new solution may or may not be within the bounds. So, we bound the new solution and then evaluate its fitness function value. Once we evaluate the fitness function value, now we are in a position to compare the solution which was used to generate the new solution. So, the solution which was used is x of i, right? So, uh, so we will accept the new solution if it is better than x i, right? So, that would complete the teacher phase. So, this block indicates the teacher phase. In the learner phase, for every member we had to select a partner, a random partner. So, x p is the partner. So, we have, we had to decide uh, which is the equation to be used, right? Depending upon the fitness function of the solution which is undergoing the learner phase and the partner solution, right? So, depending upon that, we had to decide on this equation and then we will be able to generate a new solution. Once a new solution is generated, we bounded that new solution. So, we bound those variables which are violating their domain constraints uh, and then uh, we evaluate the fitness of the new solution. So, now we have a new solution just like teacher phase, we have a new solution, we have its fitness, we have a solution which underwent learner phase and we have its fitness. So, we perform a greedy search over here and accept the solution whichever is better, right? So, this complete, this shows uh, the entire procedure which we have been discussing for uh, past some time, right? So, this is a pseudo code uh, of TLBOs. Uh, algorithms are very often uh, evaluate on the, are evaluated on the basis of the number of times we evaluate the fitness function to reach the optimal solution, right? So, if you have seen uh, every time we generate a new solution, we go and evaluate uh, the fitness function, right? So, the question is if I if I am doing t iterations, right, with a population size of np, how many functional evaluations am I doing, right? So, that is what we are going to evaluate now, right? So, if we see uh, there are three places wherein we are evaluating the fitness, here we are evaluating the fitness here we are evaluating the fitness and here we are evaluating the fitness, right? So, when we evaluate the fitness here, we are evaluating the fitness for the entire population, right? So, if my population size is NP, we will be doing NP evaluations of the fitness function, right? Whereas here in both these places, we are evaluating one only once, right? Only once for a particular member. This is inside the loop. I am not estimating, as of now, I am not estimating the total number of fitness function evaluation, right? I am just saying that for a one particular solution, how many fitness function evaluations are required in teacher phase and learner phase. So, one over here and one over uh, here. Since we are going to do this for NP populations, it will be 2 into NP, right? Because I have 2 per member. So, if I have NP members, I require 2 NP fitness function evaluations and this I am going to repeat for T generations, right? So, the total number of fitness function evaluation is 2 into NP into T. So, that is inside this algorithm loop. I also spent NP functional evaluations at the beginning to estimate the fitness function of the random population. So, that is within this iteration, we have two NPT functional evaluations, right? And I had also spent NP functional evaluations over here. So, the total number of functional evaluation is this two NPT, which is consumed during the iteration and this NP functional evaluations, which I uh, spent for evaluating the initial functional evaluation, right? So, this is the total number of functional evaluation. So, if you specify NP to be 5, right? And if you specify t, t to be 10, right? So, I do not need to actually run the algorithm to find out how many functional evaluations would be required, right? So, this will be NP 5 plus 2 NPT. So, 2 into 5 into 10, right? So, NP is 5, 2 NP 10. So, the total number of functional evaluations is, so this is 10, 100, 105, right? So, this is how we evaluate the total number of fitness function evaluation. So, now that we have uh, understood TLBO, 
let us see how well it fits into the generalized scheme which we have started with. So remember in the starting of this session, uh, we had discussed the generalized scheme for meta heuristic uh, techniques, right. So let us see how well TLBO fits into this. So defining parameters, uh, we had to do that in TLBO, right, we had to fix the population size and the maximum number of iterations. We generated a random population, we evaluated its fitness function. So all these st three steps which are there in the generalized scheme was also there in TLBO. So we had to initialize the number of uh, iterations, right. So we did something repeatedly uh, for T iterations, though we showed it only for the first iteration, right, uh, you are supposed to do it for multiple iterations. So this seems to be okay, right. So this selection operator, if you remember, we did two types of selection. One was we selected the best solution at in the teacher phase and then we had selected uh, a partner solution, right. So that can be said to be fit into this selection phase. So it is not necessary that I select uh, a per specified number of solutions. So that is the beauty of meta heuristic techniques that in TLBO we are only selecting the best solution and the partner solution, right. So in some other meta heuristic technique we may be selecting a uh, more than uh, let us say 5 solutions or more than 10 solutions from the solution pool. So it varies from technique to technique but basically I did have some kind of selection operator, right. And then if you remember we had this 3 equations, one equation in teacher phase which involved the teaching factor, right. And then I had this one equation in my learner phase, uh, like there were 2 equations but one of the equation is uh, valid. Uh, for every member depending upon the fitness function, right. So I varied those solutions to get new solutions, right. So this variation also happened, right. So once we generated new solutions in, TL, uh, in TLB also, we bounded them. If it is not within the bounds, we bound, bound the solution. So the bound, bounding can be considered as part of variation itself, right. Uh, so then we evaluated the fitness function, right, uh, of the new solution as and when we evaluated the fitness function of the new solution, here we employed a Grady selection strategy, right. So we said like between uh, the solution which is used to generate the solution and the solution which, is, which has been generated, one of them will survive based on their fitness function. So this also uh, is valid in TLBO. So we can see that TLBO fits well into this meta heuristic techniques and as we progress we will see that rest of the techniques uh, also more or less fit into this framework. So now we have uh, completed the study of teaching learning based optimization, the algorithm. Let us see how do we represent results uh, from this algorithm, right. So we have various type of convergence curve. The one that is probably the most widely used is uh, curve between uh, the number of iteration and the best fitness function value. So how do we plot it? Let us say at the beginning my population was P0, right, these were the solution, this value of decision variable x1 and x2, right, and these are their corresponding uh, fitness function value or objective function value. So what we can do is we can uh, make a plot, the x-axis iteration and the y-axis is the best fitness function value. Right. So among these three solutions, if we see 208 is the best solution. So I am going to plot that particular value alone. I am not going to plot 277 or 30, uh, 397. Only the best particular best value in the fitness function is plotted. Right. So then subsequent to this, we perform the teacher phase, the learner phase and at the end of iteration 1, let us say this is our population and these are their corresponding fitness function value, right. So in this, at the end of iteration 1, the least value is 116 in this, right. So I retain the first point because it corresponds to my iteration 0 and in it, at the end of iteration 1, I had 116. So we have plotted that 116 and we continue doing so. So at the end of iteration 2, let us say this is the fitness function value, the best value here is 68. So we plot that 68 over here and then we keep doing it and say at the end of iteration 10, we have this fitness function value, right, 0, 0, 1. In this, the least one is 0. It does not matter whether you take this 0 or this 0, right. You are not plotting the solutions. We are plotting only the fitness function value, right. So this will look like something like this. So this is called as the convergence curve. So this curve shows you that as iterations progress, uh, how much improvement we were able to do in the objective function value. In this case, it seems to have converged to the global optima, right. So there are, uh, there is not much change uh, or at least visible change in those three values. So this curve tells us the performance of the algorithm. As iteration proceeds, how we are improving in terms of 
the best solution that we have. So now we look into some of the issues in implementation of TLBO, right? So as we have shown you earlier, uh, TLBO was proposed uh, in three different papers, right? So this one is from Information Science. Uh, it was published in January 2012, right? So subsequent to this, uh, a paper came in December 2012, so the same year in the same journal Information Sciences. So this paper reported some of the issues with uh, this paper, right? Broadly there were two issues. One is that uh, the number of functional evaluation was not estimated properly. So uh, this paper reported that the function number of functional evaluation has to be uh, what we discussed earlier, 2 NPT plus NP, right? So before that it was uh, not calculated as this one, but something else, right? Additionally, uh, there was another step implemented in uh, teaching learning based optimization called as duplicate removal. We will look into that. When we have duplicate removal, uh, we will actually substitute a new solution instead of the duplicates that also consumes functional evaluation. So that was not considered in this paper, right? Apart from that, there was this issue as to when teacher phase and learner phase is to be implemented, right? So subsequent to this paper, another paper appeared in 2013, April 2013 which kind of criticized this paper, right? Stating that uh, the conclusions drawn in this paper are correct. What we are trying to show you over here is that these techniques are extremely simple, but it is necessary to, to give an exact uh, description of whatever has been proposed, right? So uh, as we will see, uh, the teaching learning based optimization in this paper does not clearly specify how the teacher and learner phase are to be implemented. Very often one way to resolve this is to look into the implementation. Many authors have started to provide their codes, right? So it is always a good idea to have a go to go and have a look at the codes because it is the codes which ultimately would have uh, generated the results. Ideally, there should not be any mismatch between what has been described in the paper and what has been implemented in the code. So this is the flowchart that is given uh, in one of the paper. Right, uh, one of the original paper which proposed TLBO. So here if we see the first step is to initialize the number of students and the termination criteria which is fine enough and then it says calculate the mean of each design variable. So each design variable over here means each decision variable. Identify the best solution which is the teacher. Uh, generate a new solution as per this equation. If the new solution is better than existing then we have to accept it right, and continue. But if the new solution is bad, then we, ha we have to reject it over here and then there is uh, no connect how to, if we reject it, how do we proceed forward, right? So assuming that it is even if we reject, it is to be, we need to go over here, right? Then we need to select any two solutions randomly. So here is where the learner phase is being implemented. So we compare the fitness of the current member and the partner. Right, depending upon which one is better, we select either this equation or this equation to generate a new solution and then again we perform a uh, greedy selection over here. Right, So whatever is the better solution, we accept that solution and then we check for the satisfaction of the termination criteria. If the termination criteria is satisfied, we stop the algorithm, else we go back over here. Right, So over here if you see, I can interpret this flowchart in two different ways. Right? First one is this one that for every iteration, right? So for i is equal to one to one to np, we'll perform the teacher phase of ith solution, we'll update the population, perform the learner phase of the ith population, and update the population. So this is one way to interpret this flowchart because it does not exactly specify this for loop, right? This this loop which you see is the iteration iteration loop. Right, because it talks about the termination satisfaction of the termination criteria. We check for this criteria at the end of the termination. Right? I can also interpret this flowchart in this way. For i is equal to 1 to np, perform the teacher phase of the ith solution, update the population, end. So in this case, all the members first complete the teacher phase. And then I have for, for i is equal to 1 to np, we perform the learner phase of the ith solution, update the population and end. So all the learner phase is over here, right? So here it is T1, L1, right? So here all the teacher phase are completed. If I have three members, the teacher phase of all the three are completed and the learner phase of all the three members are implemented over here. 
whereas here the first member will complete the teacher phase, the first member will complete the learner phase, then the second member will undergo teacher phase, the second member will undergo the learner phase, the third member will undergo the teacher phase and the third member will undergo the learner phase. So, this is what we have discussed previously. But since this flowchart is not clearly given, right? it does not explicitly state where to uh, uh, where to start the teacher phase and where to end it. So, this anomaly arises over here. right? So, whatever we have seen is this one that in iteration 1 a member will complete teacher phase, will complete learner phase only then the second member will undergo teacher and learner phase. This is how the code of TLBO is. right? So, in one of the later papers they have also given the code of teaching learning based optimization. So, in that case this is how it is implemented. Whereas, if you look at the example given in the paper, right, it employs this strategy. Right? So, if I trust the code, then I need to call this as the true TLBO. If I look into merely into the paper, this is the implementation of TLBO. Right? So, that is because it is not clearly described as to when to begin the uh, teacher phase and when to complete it and similarly when to begin the learner phase and when to complete it. So, this is exactly the same thing what we have discussed. Uh, previously, this is the flow chart and this is the pseudo code which we have discussed. right? So, here if we see we start the uh, population loop over here right? and here we complete the teacher phase right? and we implement the learner phase over here. So, the second member can undergo teacher phase only when the first member has completed the teacher phase as well as the learner phase. But it is not difficult to implement the other version. right? All we need to do is over here we need to write a end right? and then we need to begin another loop for i is equal to 1 to n p. So, if you look at the codes, you will get both types of codes. right? One is wherein the teacher phase, learner phase of every member is completed before the next, next member begins. right? This is what we have discussed, but if we implement, if we just put an end over here and begin another for over here, it becomes t 1, t 2, t 3, l 1, l 2. L3 right in every every iteration. So this is one of the issues in uh, the this is one of the issues in implementation of TLBO right. The other one is uh, the removal of duplicates right. So the description of the TLB algorithm does not mention the room removal of duplicates. First let us try to understand what are duplicate solutions. So two solutions with identical set of decision variables are said to be duplicates right. So if I have a two variable problem let us say x1 the solution x1 is 2, 3 and the solution x2 is also 2, 3. Right? Then x1 and x2 are duplicates. Obviously, the fitness function value of x1 and x2 would be identical. So, these are duplicate solutions. However, the solution x1 is equal to 2, 3 and the solution x2 is equal to 3, 2 are not identical. Right? Depending upon the fitness function, they may or may not have identical fitness function value. Right? So, here we have given two solutions let us say solution 1, solution 2, the values of the 3 decision variables are 2 comma 5 comma 4 and here it is 4 comma 2 comma 5 and the fitness function is x1 minus x2 minus x3. So, if we calculate the fitness function of this first solution it will turn out to be minus 7 and for the second solution it will turn out to be minus 3. Since the fitness function values are different, we cannot call s1 and s2 as duplicates. However, if we sort both the solutions, so if we sort the solution it will become 2 comma 4 comma 5 and the solution S2 will also become 2 comma 4 comma 5 and their fitness function would be identical. right? So, when we are comparing the solutions, right, the solutions should not be sorted and then compared. So, the value of decision variable 1 over here should be compared with the value of the decision variable over here. Similarly, the second variable has to be compared and the third variable has to be compared. We should not sort. However, the TLBO code which has been given by the authors actually sorts the solution which is incorrect. So, here S1 and S2 are not duplicates. However, if S1 had been 254 and if S3 another solution had been 052. Right? So, both of them have fitness function value of minus 7 minus 7. So, in this case I cannot call both of this as duplicates. These are realizations. So, duplicates are when two set of solutions are identical the decision variables are identical again without sorting right those are duplicate solutions so now if you look at the equations right so the new solution which we are generating in teacher phase 
or in the loner phase we have this random numbers which we are generating and since we will be generating them on a, a computer usually those random numbers would be definitely be different right so it is very rare for us to come across duplicates especially if our problem dimension is high right so now the question is should we remove the duplicates right so to remove the duplicates we will have to first identify the duplicates and then have a procedure to remove them right so if you remove one particular solution we again need to substitute it with some other solution right so one is the identification of the duplicate solution and the second is the computational time that is required for this purpose right but if the if the frequency of duplicates occurring itself is low then we need not remove this duplicates so most algorithms do not employ this duplicate removal procedure right because it is extremely rare for two solutions to be identical uh, given that we will be working with some uh, 16 decimal so to consolidate the difference between tlbo and stlbo is that uh, duplicate removal is included in tlbo right and the problem is that the duplicates are identified by sorting the solutions which is not the definition of duplicate right so that is one problem with tlbo so in sanitized tlbo we do not have any duplicate removal procedure this is consistent with the other algorithms which we will be discussing as part of this course right so the second thing is the number of times the fitness function is evaluated right so in uh, stan sanitized TLBO we have seen this expression that this is uh, unique right as long as we fix NP and T the number of fitness function evaluation is uh, deterministic and it can be determined whereas in TLBO that is not the case because it then depends upon how many duplicates we encounter for every duplicate solution that we will enc encounter we will generate a new solution so if, if we generate a new solution we will also have to evaluate its fitness value right so a priori it is not possible to say as to how many duplicates will be generated right and the number of fitness function evaluations will depend on how many duplicate solutions we generate so another difference between tlbo and stlbo is that uh, how do we identify the partners right so in tlbo it is perfectly possible that more than one solution have the same partner right so if we have let's say five solutions s1 s2 s3 s4 and s5 right then s1 and s5 can have the same partner s2 so every time it is randomly selected in tlbo whereas in stlbo we ensure that every member has a unique partner so each member s1 s2 s3 s4 s5 will be partner for one solution or the other solution so each solution will get an opportunity to be to be partner to one another solution so that's what is uh, stlbo so we do not employ duplicate removal since we do not employ duplicate removal the number of fitness function evaluation is deterministic given the size of the population and the number of iterations we can determine a priori as to how many functional values will be required and in sanitized teaching learning based optimization every member gets to be a partner to some other solution right now let us look at couple of variants of tlbo so tlbo as you know is was proposed in 2011 subsequent to that there have been uh, a large number of variants which have been proposed for tlbo we will briefly touch upon two variants of tlbo one is elitist tlbo known as etlbo so what is done over here is in every iteration we will identify the worst solutions and we will replace it with elite solutions so in every iteration what we will do is we will sort the fitness function value 2 3 5 8 9 uh, 14 17 something like this right and we will fix an elite size right so what we will do is we will save this 2 and 3 in some other variable before we begin that iteration right and at the end of the iteration we will replace the two worst solution right so if the elite size is 2 then we will replace the two worst solutions with the two best solutions so that is what is done in ETLBO so it is incorporated in every iteration at the end of learner phase otherwise the procedure to generate new solution is the same as in TLBO so in this case the algorithmic parameters are population size number of iterations and elite size so the user is also supposed to give the uh, elite size right so even in ETLBO duplicate removal is performed but after replacing uh, worst solution with elite solutions so in improved teaching learning based optimization uh, the population is divided into subgroups right it incorporates tutorial learning and self learning in teacher phase and learner phase respectively right so this basically means that whatever equation we had 
there are couple of more terms uh, to those equations right so if you are interested you can go and have a look at this paper it gives the details about this here for this course we are actually restricting with only teaching learning based optimization just to give you an overview about the developments we are discussing these two variants but our objective was to learn only teaching learning based optimization that's why we are not doing this improved teaching learning based optimization in greater detail right coming back to improved tlbo right so here we don't have one teacher but we have a number of teachers which equal to the number of groups so if we have a population size of 100 we may decide to have five groups right so there will be five teacher corresponding to each group and there will be a chief teacher so chief teacher is the best solution in among all the 100 solutions right so the remaining teachers are selected based on their fitness value and the fitness value of the chief teacher right in addition to that an adaptive teaching factor is introduced in improved teaching learning based optimization additionally the concept of elitism and duplicate removal is also incorporated in uh, improved tlbo so the codes of tlbo are freely available right in the subsequent uh, in the subsequent session we will also implement tlbo on matlab right so as invented by the inventors uh, is available over here right uh, so this is the website of professor rao right you can go and have a look uh, you will be able to see that it includes duplicate removals uh, you can also see how duplicates are actually identified after sorting which is not correct right so you can download the sanitized tlbo from this link right so over here uh, we employ this strategy that t1 l1 t2 l2 t3 l3 and so on so the first member completes the teacher and learner phase only then the second member undergoes teacher and learner phase whereas the matlab code over here in this case all the members complete their teacher phase first right and then all the members undergo learner phase so for an arbitrary problem it may not be possible to say which one will work which one will give better results right so but both versions are available and a java code is also available at uh, github right so you can download uh, any of these resources and use it so some additional reading is given over here right so this is the information science paper by in which tlbo was proposed right so this is again a note on T teaching learning based optimization which criticized this paper uh, this is comments on a note so which criticized this paper right? uh, there is a book on tlbo by uh, professor rao right so you can uh, have a look at it teaching learning based algorithm and its engineering applications a survey of teaching learning based optimization is also available it was published in uh, 2019 right so teaching learning based optimization has also been extended for solving multi objective optimization problem right? so you can go to this journal engineering applications of artificial intelligence and have a look at it if you are interested in this session uh, we saw the generic framework of meta heuristic algorithms uh, we then learnt what is sanitized teaching learning based optimization uh, we showed you the working of sanitized tlbo on a four variable optimization problem we then discussed some of the issues which are there in tlbo right so for example duplicate removal uh, how do we identify duplicates right all those things we discussed we then looked into the two variants of TLBO, uh, elitist TLBO and improved teaching learning based optimization. With that, we will end this session. In the next session, we will implement uh, uh, teaching learning based optimization uh, using MATLAB. Thank you.